Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Introduction to SBIR and STTR Funding Opportunities. My name is Shira Roni Mahluf. I'm a Director of Business Development at the Freeman Group and I'm pleased to be presenting today's webinar. To learn more about the Freemind Group, you can visit our website, freemindconsultants.com. And to keep up to date on the latest in non-dilutive funding, you are welcome to follow us on Twitter and YouTube, um, as well as to join us LinkedIn group, non-dilutive funding for life sciences R&D. Past webinar uh, are available on our YouTube channel, Freemind Group, and we will be sending all of you the slide deck uh, of today's webinar. Also, the slide deck is available now in the, head, in the handout section of your GoWebinar sidebar. At the end of this webinar, we should have some time for Q&As. Uh, you are also welcome to call or email me directly with questions specific to your situation or science. My contact information will be available on the last slide uh, of today's presentation. Okay, so let's start with a short introduction of the Freeman Group. Freeman Group is a consulting firm specializing in non-dilutive funding. Actually, we are the global leader in non-dilutive funding. We are 60 full-time employees. We are in the business for 18 years now, since 1999. We work across the life sciences, academics, research institutes, universities, as well as industry from small startups all the way up to big pharmaceutical companies and everything in between. Uh, we submit over 500 applications every year on behalf of our clients and that's a great deal of experience, knowledge, expertise which we put together to increase your chances of winning awards uh, and to help achieve the largest non-dilutive awards possible. Our main objective is to help our clients get as much money as possible from non-dilutive sources. We at the Freeman Group see non-dilutive funding as an essential tool to maximize your funding potential. We conduct a very systematic and strategic approach towards non-dilutive funding. When we start working with a client, the first, the first thing we do is we identify the most relevant funding opportunities. This is a very important step. If you have a great science, but apply for a grant that's not relevant to your science or use the incorrect mechanism, you will not be successful, despite the fact that your science is really innovative. Our analyst, um, after identifying the most relevant opportunities, our analyst um, then create a list of opportunities uh, with which we build a multi-submission granting strategy to maximize your chance of winning awards. We manage the complex project production process and lead a joint application writing process. Of course, we cannot do this alone. While we certainly uh, lead the process, we do need you on board in this joint effort, since you are the real expert in your science. And when relevant, we support final contract negotiations. We look mainly towards the NIH, the DOD, uh, BARDA, DITRA, DARPA, CDC, FDA, NSF, as well as private foundations. So the total pocket of money uh, of these sources is estimated at about $50 billion annually. Of this, of this, um, the NIH is the main source of funding. Its budget for 2017 is $34 billion, while the vast majority of the NIH budget, $28 billion to be exact, um, is devoted for extramural research down outside the NIH itself, such as research projects, uh, grants, and R&D contracts. Okay, so now we are looking at the categorical spending of the NIH for 2017. You can see that the indication are listed here with their budget. There are hot topics that are very well funded, like cancer and neuroscience with almost $6 billion, um, and infectious diseases, for example, with $4 billion, and many more. More importantly, the list includes almost every indication possible in the life science field. 
and this is the NIH only. So you can be definitely sure that you will find funding for your research no matter which indication it is. Today we will, discuss, we will be discussing the uh, SBIR and, S and SDTR mechanism. SBIR is a small business innovation research um, and SDTR is small business technology transfer. Um, we will discuss the different features of each one of them, the eligibility criteria for SBIR and SDTR, we will review the various SBIR and STTR opportunities out there. And for dessert, I'll share some interesting information of, on these two mechanisms. Now, although this is an STTR and SBIR webinar, you should keep in mind that while the SBIR and STTRs are a great source of funding, um, they, are only, they are only a small percentage of the funds awarded by the NIH and other government agencies. So do not ignore other mechanisms that are out there. OK, um, a little background on the STTR and SBIR programs. They are congressionally mandated set-aside programs, which means by law, money must be set aside for these programs every year since 1982 for SBIR and 1999, or I'm sorry, 1992 for STTR. This, this in order to strengthen the role of innovative small businesses in federally funded R&D. Federal agencies with extramural R&D budget of more than $100 million are required by law to allocate 3.2% of their budget to SDIR programs every year. The SDTR program requires government agencies with extramural R&D budget of $1 billion or more to set aside 0.45% of their extramural research budget for SDTR awards also every year. The SBIR and SDTR programs are only available um, to domestic small businesses concerns or SBCs as we like to call them. And while the STTR and SBIR goal is to help small businesses engage in R&D, they are specifically looking to fund R&D, which has the potential for commercialization. That's a very important goal of these programs. While we will be focusing mostly on the NIH, and we'll touch a bit on the NSF, keep in mind that the DOD, CDC, and FDA also have SBIR programs. The mission of the SBIR program is to support scientific excellence and technological innovation through the investment of federal research funds in critical American priorities to build a strong national economy. Among the goals of the SBIR and SCTRs are, uh, first, stimulate technological innovation in order to meet federal R&D needs. What they are looking for is the commercialization of innovations. They want to help small businesses participate in the growth and development of the U.S. economy. And they want to help socially and economically disadvantage small businesses' concerns, as well as women-owned businesses. While SBIRs and STTRs have some similar goals, um, their objectives differ in that SBIRs are intended to increase private sector commercialization of innovations, uh, of innovations um, derived from federally funded R&D by funding early stage small businesses that are seeking to commercialize innovative biomedical technologies, while SCTRs are intended to stimulate a partnership of ideas and technologies between innovative SBCs and nonprofit research institutes through federally funded R&D and therefore require that the small business formally collaborate with a research institute in phase one and phase two. In order to be eligible for an SBAR or STTR, the entity applying for the grant must be a for-profit company and it must be located in the US. It must have no more than 500 employees, including affiliates, 
must be more than 50% owned and controlled by one or more individuals who are citizens or permanent uh, residents, aliens of the United States, or more than 50% owned and controlled by other for-profit businesses that is more than 50% owned and controlled by one or more individuals who are citizens or permanent residents alliance in the US. Or it may even be owned by multiple VC or private equity firms or hedge funds as long as no one of these owns more than 50%. Very important to note, all of these eligibility requirements must be met at the time of the award. This means, for example, if you now have 450 employees, but by the time the award you will have over 500 employees, that will be an issue. SBIR and SCTRs are similar in many ways, however, they differ in two major ways. The first First of all, um, as related to the principal investigator, the PI. For an SBIR, the PI must be primarily employed uh, with the SBC at the time of the award and for the duration of the project period, unless, unless a waiver is granted by the NIH. When they say primarily employed, they mean that the PI must spend more than half of his or her time um, at this company, or in other words, the PI must not be uh, a full-time employee of another organization. On the other hand, for, S for an SCTR, primary employment is not required, so the PI must be either from the small business or from the collaborating nonprofit research institution. Additionally, SBIRs require that at least two-thirds of the work be done by the SBC, while STTRs require that at least 40% of the work be done by the SBC and at least 30% by the research institution. And it's very important to remember that, again, all work must be done in the US. As I mentioned earlier, the SBIR and SCTR programs are available from many government agencies, including NIH, NSF, DOD, and others. However, today we will be focusing mostly on the NIH and also a bit on the NSF. So NIH, approximately $900 million go to NIH, SBIR, and SCTR awardees every year. The NIH, SBIR, and SCTR programs are structured in three phases. So now we'll speak on the phase one. So the objective of phase one is to establish a technical merit, feasibility, and commercial potential of the proposed R&D efforts, and to determine the quality of performance of the small businesses awardee prior to providing further federal support in phase two. As far as funding, SBIR and SCTR Phase 1 awards are similar in that they normally do not exceed $150,000 total cost. However, with appropriate justifications, awards can exceed by 50% or up to $225,000. However, that's not all. Um, I heard from Dr. Todd Heim. Program Director um, of the SBIR Development Center at the NCI, who spoke at Freemind's Research 12 an Annual Non-Dilutive Funding Summit, that most NIH institutes will fund up $300,000. Check out videos from our recent Non-Dilutive Funding Summit on our YouTube channel. So, as far as time period goes, SBIR Phase 1 are for a period of up to six months, and SCTR phase one are for a period of up to one year. The objective of phase two is to continue the R&D efforts initiated in phase one. This funding um, is based on the result achieved in phase one and the scientific merit and commercial potential of the project proposed in phase one. Only Phase 1 awardees are eligible for a Phase 2 awards. 
SBIR and SCTR phase two awards normally do not exceed million dollars total cost for two years, but with appropriate justification from the applicant, Congress uh, will allow awards to exceed these amounts by up to 50% or up to $1.5 million for SBIR phase two or, or SCTR phase two. And here too, um, that's not the limit. At our research and non-dilutive uh, funding summit, summit, Dr. Todd Hein, NCI's SBIR program director, let us know that phase two SBIR funding uh, from NIH can give, even go up to $2 million. There is also a second phase two award, uh, whereby agencies may award a second phase two to continue a phase two project. Um, this, is no, this is not so well known, uh, but it's not something new. The NIH has been offering these opportunities for several years. Um, you may know this as a Phase 2B award or a competing renewal or a Phase 2B bridge award. The purpose of this award is to support the next step of development for federally funding SBIR Phase 2 projects to address the funding gap known as the Valley of Death uh, between the end of the SBIR Phase 2 awards uh, and the subsequent round of financing, need, um, of financing needs uh, for commercialization. Unfortunately, this mechanism, uh, direct to Phase 2, uh, has expired. This was a pilot program which we expect to be renewed, so stay tuned for further details as they become available. However, for now, you still can apply for a fast track. So the fast track uh, incorporates a submission and review process in which both phase one and phase two grant applications are submitted and reviewed together as one application. Because both phases undergo review at the same time, the NIH phase track, uh, fast track mechanism can reduce or eliminate the funding gap between phases. The two questions we ask our clients before applying for fast tracks are, um, first of all, can you show a, a smooth transition between phase one and phase two? And second, can you show a clear commercialization plan? These two are very important questions you need to verify before applying to this uh, mechanism. It's worth pointing out that the NSF, which does have SBIR and STTR programs, does not offer a fast track option. When we go over some solicitations um, in a few minutes, I'll point out which programs offer the fast track option, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so the standard due dates for SBIR and SCTRs are every four months um, on the 5th of January, 5th of April, and 5th of September. It usually takes around four months to get an initial review and another four months or a total of eight months um, from the time the application is submitted until you see the money. According to Dr. Todd Haim, uh, our friend at the NCI's SBIR Development Center, they are working hard to reduce the time from application uh, to award to six months instead of eight months, which is great. The September 5th deadline is right around the corner. Um, so now, basically, it's the perfect time to start working on your SBIR and STTR applications, uh, whether you choose to do it with us or on your own. Some solicitations have a non-standard due date, um, so I suggest that you carefully read each solicitation um, and pay attention to the details. If you don't, you may miss the deadline and other important information. Um, so let's look uh, at some of the funding opportunities. Um, they fall into two general categories. The first one is solicited and, unsol and the second one in, is unsolicited. Unsolicited opportunities, also known as investigator initiated opportunities or omnibus solicitations or even parent announcements, um, are where an investigator submits a research application 
Um, just about every NIH institute part participate in a parent announcement. So if you can't find any solicitation which exactly fit your, your science, you can always go to the omnibus route. It's important that you understand that approximately, um, like you can see here, 67% of all awards across the NIH are unsolicited. So even if you look around and you don't find an exact solicitation for what you are looking to fund, utilize the unsolicited mechanism. Don't miss out on them. So now let's start to look uh, at some omnibus solicitation. Here we can see two omnibus solicitations where applications are accepted for phase one, phase two, and fast track. The first one is omnibus solicitation, uh, PA 16302, uh, is an SBIR parent announcement for the, from the NIH. Most NIH institutes participate in, the, in this parent announcement, which offers standard funding and due dates. Next deadline is September 5th. The second omnibus solicitation you can see here, uh, PA 16303, is an STTR parent announcement. Here too, most NIH institutes participate, uh, funding is standard, and standard application due dates apply. Next deadline here again um, is September 5th, so don't miss it. For the fast track application, um, you submit both the phase one and the phase two applications together. The phase one portion of a fast track must specific, uh, specify clear measurable goals or milestones um, that should be achieved prior to initiating phase two work. If awarded, the phase two portion may not be funded until a phase one final report ever has been received. Um, and assessed by program staff showing that the phase one milestone have been successfully achieved. The NSF, uh, or the National Science Foundation, funds roughly 400 companies every year via its SBIR and STTR program for approximately $190 million. Here we have an NSF SBIR Phase 1 solicitation, NSF 17554, by the Directorate of, for Engineering, Industrial Innovation and Partnership. The R&D should be based on innovative technology with potential for great commercial and um, social benefits. The program invites proposals from small businesses across the, bro uh, across the a broad range uh, of science and engineering disciplines. If successful, you receive a grant uh, of up to $150,000 and up to $225,000 for a six-month development uh, project. Um, you can then compete for a second grant uh, of up to $750,000 over a two-year period with the aim of advancing um, the technology towards commercial development. The solicitation asks for information about your track record of commercialization, uh, but if you are a startup, you shouldn't worry. They encourage proposals from both new and seasoned entrepreneurs. What is most important here is that you have a transport transformative idea or innovation and that your team's primary goal is to commercialization is the commercialization of the technology. This is a very broad solicitation. However, there are certain selected topics um, the NSF is looking to fund, including advanced materials, um, biological technologies, smart health and biomedical technologies. For a complete 34-page list of topics, see the NSF website link um, you see at the, bottom of, at the bottom of this slide. Don't worry about writing it down. Like I said, uh, we will be sending you the slide deck, so you'll have it um, there too. Okay. 
Okay, so as I mentioned, um, the NSF, SBR, and SCTR program has two deadlines a year, December and June. Um, the next deadline uh, is going to be in December. Um, usually, they will uh, issue the, uh, um, the applications two months before the deadline, so stay tuned for that. Uh, funding, like I said, uh, $150,000 for six month for SBIR and $225,000 for 12 months uh, for SCTR. Um, phase 2 is similar in both SBIR and SCTR, $750,000 for two years. Um, the PI, um, a PI must devote a minimum of one calendar month uh, of effort per six months of performance to an SBIR phase one project, for example. So if we look at 12 calendar months uh, for the beginning, is the amount of time dedicated to working on this project. So let's say 10% over 12 months is 1.2 calendar month. Uh, in terms of their uh, goals, phase one is feasibility and commercialization plan. Phase two is prototype development. Um, and the fast track, like I said, is not available here. Okay, so until um, this point, I presented some of the unsolicited opportunities. Now let's focus on solicited opportunities. There are many solicitations across the broad range of science. Um, if you go to the NIH website today and do a research for SBIR and SCTR, you'll find 68 open solicitations. And actually, I did this yesterday, um, so it may have changed since then. Um, here are a few opportunities, a few examples. Uh, for example, the NIDDK, um, National Institute of Digestive, Diabetes, and Kidney Diseases, um, Exploratory Clinical Trials for Small Businesses, also NIAID, the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, SBIR Phase 2, Clinical Trial uh, Implementation Cooperative Agreement, and uh, also from the National Human Genome Research Institute, the NHGRI, Novel Genomic Technology Development. So there are definitely many, many opportunities. Um, look to find what's appropriate for you, and don't forget the parent announcement as well. So as I said before, SBAR and SCTRs are not easy to get. Actually, none of the government grants are easy. Each of them uh, has its requirements and challenges. The SBR and SCTR, the SCTRs have some inherent challenges. Um, as I mentioned earlier, for SBIR in phase one, the company is responsible for at least 67% of the work, and the research institution uh, can complete up to 33rd, uh, th 33, I'm sorry, of the work. In phase two, the company is responsible for at least 50% of the work. For on the other hand, uh, for SCTRs, the small business must perform at least 40% of the work, and the U.S. research institution must perform at least 30%. The remaining 30% of the work may be performed either by the SBC. Um, or the collaborating nonprofit research institution, or by any additional third party. This does not mean that a virtual company is ineligible. How, ineligible. Um, however, you need to know how to deal with it. So, regarding the milestone, um, one of the goals of the SBIR and STTR program is commercialization of innovations. These programs are very interested in product development. Therefore, showing milestones um, and meeting them is very important. There are several uncommon sections that must be submitted with the application. In uh, phase two proposal, for example, one must, must submit uh, a 10-page commercialization plan. Uh, there are numerous items that must be addressed 
when assembling these documents and the language used should be more business-like and less scientific. The consortium the, or collaboration um, is also a vital part of the application where present effort in how VS work outsourced is questionable. Also, to ensure that all aspects uh, of your application are covered from an expertise perspective, it's sometimes wise to impl implement a plan for multi-PIs. Finally, it's important to make sure that application you submit is a coherent application that is responsive to solicitations requirements uh, and guidelines. So now let's take a moment to look at the NIH review process. So putting it, putting it simply, um, in reviewing and considering whether to find your application, the reviewers are looking at the strength and the risk of your application. The reviewers are looking at five main things. The first one is the significance of your research to public health. If it is innovative enough and you will make a change, do you have the right environment to support the work you propose? Do you have the right leadership and team in place to successfully lead such a project? Looking at the uh, PI, they want to make sure that the PI has the right expertise, knowledge, experience to manage this. But overall, the most important aspect they look at um, is the research approach, your scientific approach. They are looking at your milestones, your specific goals, ultimately, Top science win awards. As you all probably know, um, there are a few main sources of funding uh, in general. Angels, public markets, VCs, and non-diluted funding. We'll look at non-diluted funding as a very important strategic source, among the others, that will help you to maximize the company's funding potential. Yes, it is not easy to win these grants, but it is free money that you just cannot ignore. Now from a more broad perspective, I'd like to take a step back um, and give you an idea of our systematic approach towards non-diluted funding and how to maximize your chances to, for award. So first of all, you need to conduct a strategic assessment of your financial and scientific needs. Then identify all relevant funding opportunities that are out there and can be suitable to you. Know the interest of the agency. What is on their agenda? What are they looking to fund? If necessary, communicate with the program officers. This is extremely important and valuable. At the end of the day, in order to be successful, you need to correlate the granting strategy with your long-term R&D plan. Next, I'd like to emphasize the need to target the right mechanism. It is very important to know your way around these mechanisms um, as they represent more than just letters and numbers. There are several different pockets of money uh, for industry as well as academic industry collaboration like SBR and SCTRs, and you will need to identify and target what is the best for your project. Also, it is vital to understand the different size of award and success rates, know the different funding levels, and match them with your requirements and needs. So after you did your homework, execute a long-term multi-submission granting strategy. Submit as many applications as possible in order to increase your chances to win an award. The next step after you conducted the strategic assessment and identified all the relevant opportunities, um, the, first, the next step is to write the application for each one of the agencies. It is important to know your weaknesses. Um, if there is a field in your research you feel uncomfortable with, don't hesitate to ask for help or aid from another organization who, who experts in that field and collaborate with it. Find the right partner. The NIH welcomes collaborations from all kinds. Unlike the STTR, it is not necessary for SBIR, but it is well welcomed. 
um, know the interest of the agencies and adjust your application uh, respectively. Address the non-important admins parts, uh, which are important at the end of the day. You don't want to uh, write an application and work on an application and find out after the submission uh, the, that you are not eligible to apply for this one. Last but not least, establish yourself both as a top researcher as well as an experienced manager. Green FreeMind help you to maximize your funding potential through three services. The first one is identifying all relevant funding opportunities. Our client strategies get an understanding of your pipeline, your goals, your funding needs. Then they lay out all of the opportunities out there and um, that can potentially fit your needs. We then create a multi-submission granting strategy and submit as many top quality applications as possible. We help our clients to write the applications in a joint effort um, and it's a pinpoint process and we do submit the application once we both feel the application is the best it can be. Um, and, and this is the process, basically. So, thank you for attending the webinar today. Um, this is a perfect time for questions. Um, let's see what we have. Okay, um, so the first question is, we are a company located in Germany uh, with U.S. ownership. Are we eligible for SBAR? So the answer is no. Um, like I said, the work must be done in the U.S. and not outside the U.S., no matter who is the owner uh, of the company. Um, so uh, that was it. Another question I see here is, how long does it take to prepare an application? So usually for applications like SBAR and SETRs, it takes around four to six weeks to produce them. Um, and with the uh, September 5th deadline um, around the corner, this means that this is a perfect time in actually to start working on them. Sorry. So I can see here that there are a few specific questions. I'll try to answer them by email uh, because I don't think it's relevant for everybody who attends here today. Um, so I'm also um, sharing uh, the link to register for the next month's webinar on August 2nd, um, covering the funding landscape beyond the SBAR and STTR. Um, this is available in the chat section. I'll just Post it in a minute. Okay. Um, and um, we look forward to seeing you there. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I will send this slide as a PDF tomorrow. The recording and the presentation will be available on our YouTube channel. Thank you again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you um, in our web in our next webinar next month. Thank you.